Welcome to the lecture series on advanced VLSI design course. In last couple of lectures, we were talking about VLSI design verification. So, now I will take you through remaining portion of the VLSI design verification. So, in the last class, we discussed about equivalence checking. So, we discussed combinational equivalence checking and we also discussed how we can formulate a sequential equivalence checking problem as a combinational equivalence checking by unrolling sequential circuit and we, we can verify the unrolled co combinational, combinational circuit vis a vis the, the other, other design. So, uh, the one of the problem that we discussed was the circuit size increases, the number of input variables increases. So, that, that, that is the problem. Then other problem, uh, other solution that we discussed was we can, we have two uh, finite state machines and then we, if we can reduce these two finite state machine and we check the isomorphism of these two reduced finite state machine, we can say that both of the machines are equivalent. So, these two techniques we already discussed. Now, the I will discuss the third technique which is more common and more popular that is based on the reachability analysis. So, what do we do is that we have two machines machine M 1 and machine M 2 and then we generate a product machine out of these two. And now, for this product machine if we start from a say initial state S 0 of this machine and initial start uh, state S 1 of machine M 2, then we, we, we check in the product machine whether we can uh, we reach some illegal state uh, by, by traversing this machine or not. If we reach to a an illegal state in that case here both of the machines are not equivalent otherwise machines are equivalent to each other. So, as, as I mentioned that here we are uh, constructing a product machine. Pro, uh, so, say if one machine has say n number of states, another machine has m number of states in that case here product machine will have total m into m n into m number of states. So, say one has 2 and another has 3. So, that means here we have all possible 6 com co combinations of these these states and based on the, the state transition some of the combinations are legal, some of the combinations are illegal. If we end up to a an illegal combination in that case uh, that those two machines are illegal because uh, otherwise uh, these are not supposed to, to reach to that state. So, as I said that here the, this we use the symbolic uh, FSM traversal of the pro product machine and, and figure out whether, whether we are uh, able to, to reach to the illegal state or not. So, then here how we formulate that. So, say these are the two machines one is uh, machine M 1 that has some combination part and, and sequential part uh, the flip flops and the, the another machine is, is, is M 2. So, now what do we do is we uh, construct a product machine and whose output of both of the machines are connected to a, a XNOR gate and this XNOR gate is supposed to produce output 1 if both bo both of the machines are, are equivalent otherwise it may produce 0. So, uh, now you have two machines M 1 and machine M 2. So, we create a, a product machine M that is M 1 cross M 2. We traverse the, the, the states of, of M that that is product machine and check if the output of each uh, out check the output of each of the machine. If the output of machine M is 1 output of machine M is 1 only when the output of both of, both of the machines are 1 otherwise it, it is 0. If output of M if all output of M are, are 1 in that case here M 1 and M 2 are equivalent otherwise the, these are not equivalent and then here we can reach to an error state and then this error trace will produce the counter example. So, that means, here looking at the error trace we can find out what is the source of the bug. So, now let us come to how to construct such kind of product machine. So, there are two machines uh, as M 1 and M 2 and it say S 1 is the, the state set of um, uh, machine M 1 and S 2 is the state set of machine M 2. Now, here the product machine will have two machine uh, state set S that is S 1 cross F 2. So, if S 1 is 2, S 2 is, is 3 that means, here there would be total 6 states in the product machine. 
and next state function that delta of s into x would be s 1 cross s 1 into x. So, and this will map to s 1 cross s 2 and output function lambda of s of x it would be s 1 cross x 2 cross x to either 0 or, or, or 1. So, when O 1 and O 2 are, are same in that case here uh, output is 1 otherwise it is 0. Okay, so, the, this construct this and then here this output is, is construction of this output is known as meter. So, now here the, the, the lambda function that is the output function would be the output function of mach, machine m 1 and output of, uh, x, x nor with output function of machine m 2. Sorry, I mentioned earlier x or this is x nor operation. So, now here we uh, look at the error trace if we are getting output as 0 and, the, and that error trace is the distinguishing sequence. So, that means here sequence that can produce two different outputs from the two different machines. So, it is sequence of input which produce one at the, the, the uh, output and now say la, let us look at the how we can distinguish two machines say machine m 1 has two states 0 and 1 and machine m 2 has three states 0, 1 and 2 and the, these are the, the, the state transitions. Now, here we would like to see whether both of the machines are equivalent or not. Now, what do we do? We need to uh, construct a product machine and product machine would will have say here this machine has two states, this has three states. So, that means here product machine will have six states out of six states some are illegal, some are, are legal and what we want? We want that here all the, the legal machines state should be reachable and all the illegal machines should not be reachable. So, now we cre create a combined state that is S 1 into S 2 and so say here uh, we, we have state 0 and 1 here we have 0, 1 and 2. So, now, now the, the, the combined state that we can create out of this, this is 0 and, and 1 and this one has, has 0, 1 and, and 2. So, now, now here the combined state would be 0, 0, 0 dot 1, 0 dot 2, then 1 dot 0, 1 dot 1 and 1 dot 2. So, these are the, the total 6 states a product machine will have. Some will be legal states, some states are uh, illegal states. Now, here we have to look at the, the state transition. So, these are the, the six states available and now we, we have to construct the state transition. So, the, the state transitions are, are, are uh, labeled over the, these edges. So, that means here this says that if I apply 0 in that case here, this will stay in the same state and output would be 1. So, now let, let us say that, that initially the, this machine is in state 1 and this machine is also in, in state 1. So, now when it is in the state 1 in that case here on the arrival of 0, it will stay in the same state and produce output as 1 and on arrival uh, of 1 here it will go to, to state state 0 and produce output as 0. So, this is the, the, the state transition when it is in state 1. Now, here what are the, the, the state transitions of this machine m 2 when it is in the, the state. So, when it is in state 1 in that case here on arrival of 0, it will stay in state 1 and produces output as 1 and when on the, the arrival of 1 here it will go to state 2 and produces output 0. So, now, now here say on the in, in the product machine that, that may, may have a state 1 1 and, and 0 2. Right. So, now, now here on uh, the on arrival of 0, this will stay in, in, in state 1, this will stay in, in state 1. So, that means, your product ma machine will is, will have a state 1 dot 1 and on the arrival of 0, it will stay, stay in the, the same state. And now, here output of this machine is 1, output of this machine is 1 and x nor of these two outputs would be 1. So, output would be 1. Now, here on arrival of 1 as input in that case here, this machine will go to, to 0, this machine will go to 2, in that case here the product machine will go to a state that is labeled with 0 dot 2. So, on arrival of the 1 here it will go to state 0 dot 2 and because output in machine m 1 is 0, output in machine m 2 is 0 and x nor of these two machine would be 1. So, in that case here output would be 1. This way here we cons construct the state transition in a product machine. 
So, output would be if output is 1 in that case here uh, they, these are equivalent it is ok, if output is 0 in that case here the product machine enters uh, into erroneous state. So, let us let us take, take example and see whether they, 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 these two machines are equivalent or not. So, these are the, the two machines and I say I, I start from some state say initial state in this machine is 0 and initial state in this machine is, is 0. So, now here we start to, to construct a product machine and see how far we can go and how many states we can reach. So, now we, we maintain a repository of uh, states which are already reached and, and then the, the output uh, on arrival of 0 and 1. So, if means initially both of these machines are in, in state 0, in that case initial state is, is 0 0 that I can, can write as 0 dot 0 and now on the arrival of 0, this machine stays in 0 state 0, this machine also stays in machine state 0. So, that means your product machine will stay in 0 dot 0 state and output of machine m 1 is 0, output of machine m 2 is 0 and hence the, the output of the product machine would be 1 because this is x nor of outputs of these two machines. Now, on the arrival of, of 1 here, so now here on the arrival of 0 as input output will be 1. Now, here look at the, the output on the arrival of 1. So, when, when it, it the arrival of 1 is there in machine m 1, it will go to state 1. On the arrival of 1 on in this machine m 2, it will also go to machine to state 1. So, that means here the product machine will go to a state that is 1 dot 1. Right. And what would be the output here? This machine produces output 1, this machine produces output 1 and product of these two, uh, no sorry x nor of these two would be 1. Hence, here so x nor is, is 1. So, now here from this initial state I can reach to, to, to state 0 0 or I can reach to state 1 1. Now, here let us look at if I am I'm in state 1 1 how it progresses. So, now if it is in state 1 1 on arrival of 0, it will stay in, in state 1. On arrival of 0, this also stays in state 1. So, then here the product machine will also stay in state 1 dot 1. So, now uh, it will stay in state 1 dot 1 when uh, arrival of 0. And in both of the cases, both of the machines are producing output 1. So, hence, x nor of these two outputs would be 1. So, it will produce output 1. What happens when uh, when you you get input as one? In on the the arrival of input as one, this machine will go to state zero, right? And produces output zero. This machine will go to state two and produces output one. So that means here this uh, so that then the the combined machine or product machine will produce output 1. So, it will produce output 1 and go to state 1 0 dot 2 because this goes to 0 this go, go, goes to 2. Right. So, now, now here you, you will reach to the new state that is 0 dot 2. So, these are reachable states. Now, in 0 dot 2 on the arrive. So, you are in 0 here and 2 here on the arrival of 0 it will stay in 0 on arrival of 0, this will also stay in 0. So, that means, here on the arrival of, of 0, it will state, uh, stay back in 0 dot 2 state and produces output as 1, because 0 here and, and, and 0 here. Now, so this is the case when you have, you receive 0 as input. If you receive 1 as input in that case here, from 0 it will go to state 1, from 2 it will go to state 0. So, now here it will go to state 1 dot 0, right this goes here, this goes here. So, now, now here this will go, go to, to state and the, uh, state 1 dot 0 and then here it will produce output 1. Now, when you are in, in, in state 0 dot 2, on arrival of 1, arri sorry on arrival of 0, so it is 0 dot 2. On arrival of 0, it stays, in, it stays back in 0 on arrival of 0 here it stays back in 0, uh, sorry it is 1 0, 1, 1 dot 0. 
So, in 1 dot 0 here on the arrival of 0, it will stay back in, in, in 1 on arrival of 0, this also stays back in, in, in 0. So, now here the product machine will stay back in, in 1 dot 0 state, but this produces output 0, this produces output 1. So, these are, are producing output 0 uh, output uh, as 0 and 0 output is, is, is erroneous. So, now here you are able to reach a an erroneous state. Hence, these two designs are not equivalent. So, now here you can, you can further traverse like if it is 0 1 in that case here it can can uh, go to, to another state and produces again again the, the erroneous output. So, now here if you want to find out the error trace in that case here your, your error trace that can result into into erroneous state would be 1 1 1 and 0 right or 1 1 1 and 1. So, these are the, 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 the error trace. So, the, this error trace will tell you that these under this condition if these two machines are not equivalent. So, that means, under this condition these two machines are producing two different outputs hence these are not equivalent. If you so, when they so, if this process stops either it pro it result into erroneous output or so, that means, your output is, is, is 0 or it is not able to in include any more new states. In that case here uh, you can say that, that now here all the reachable states are producing output as 1 of and, and known uh, means uh, the other states which may be may produce output 0 are not reachable. Hence, your machine is safe under the, the, the conditions the, this machine both of the machines will behave exactly in the same way. Hence, you can verify these two these two machines. So, this way here we can use the, the, the straight traversal and we can verify the, the equivalence of two, two machines by converting a machine into a product machine. So, now so far we discussed about the, the equivalence checking, the three methods of the equivalence checking. First method by uh, converting the sequential equivalence checking into a combinational equivalence, equivalence checking by having the time frame expansion or by checking the isomorphism between the two state machines or by using the, the, the finite state machine traversal. So, we have to convert a, uh, both of the machines into a pro product machine and we, we have to tra traverse that product machine and check whether any of the illegal machine is uh, state is reachable or not. If illegal state is reachable in that case here both of the machines are not equivalent otherwise the machines are equivalent. So, this completes the sequential equivalence checking portion. Now, I switch to the next topic that is model checking or, or property checking, where it is more convenient, where it is more needed like here in the, the VLSI design flow I, I, I have shown you that at various locations we use the, the equivalence checking. So, that means, here you transform one design uh, from one level of abstraction to another level of abstraction and then you check the equivalence between those two. So, like here RTL and gate level net, net list you, you uh, apply the equivalence checking and, and, and check whether both of the designs are equivalent or not. Now, it is now we are going at higher level of abstraction and that is system level design. And at system level design, we are we are try we try to explore the the ar uh, architecture of the system. And most of the time, the effort from system level design to RTL is manual. And if it is manual in that case, here we are more error prone. So that means here we are likely to to uh, so this is your specification and now this is the transformation. So, from this to this if we are going manually in that case here we are likely to introduce some more error. So, this is the barrier to adopt the system level design methodology because this task is manual. Somehow, if I can do the, the, the this automatic in that case here I am likely to move myself to a higher level of abstraction where in the complexity is smaller and I can handle the larger design that is the place where the model checker or if this is property checkers are 
more meaningful though these are meaningful at the, the other level of abstraction as well but but here your your equivalence checking may not help so you, you you have to go for that so now here what we want that here whatever properties we have we have to do check the the, the the model for that and then we have we can so if you can verify the the the, the, the properties of, of the, the system level design and make sure that the, this design is equivalent after the uh, after that here you can have equivalence checking between these two and we can upgrade our, uh, ourselves to higher level of abstraction so that means here we we can eliminate after that we can uh, eliminate the, the the manual manual effort so here what we want because here you have behavioral information about the system and we, we can have some, some specification about the, the system in terms of the properties like if it is a, an arbiter then we, we look for the, the property like deadlock like fair chance to, to each of the master or, uh, or something like that if it is traffic light controller in that case we are interested whether it is giving the it is not providing green signal to crossroads so this is the place where model checker can play an important role model checker was proposed in 1981 by immersion and uh, clark so what it does is it uses or it models the implementation in the form of finite state machine or state transition diagram. So, here you have a state transition diagram, you convert that in little bit different form than a state transition diagram uh, that is known as Kripke structure, I, I will tell you wha what that Kripke structure is. Then, uh, because here a, if it is a sequential circuit in that case it has some temporal behavior. So, that means here we have to specify the specification in terms of the, the, the temporal logic. So, temporal logic is uh, or uh, specification is specified in terms of temporal formula and then we have to, to check whether in all the states of model M it satisfies your model that is your finite state machine or grip case structure satisfies this formula. If it satisfies in that case here this is equivalent to all case simulation for that kind of property or formula. So, the, the structure is, is as follows you have a grip case structure that, that, that is nothing but, but a variant of finite state machine or, or state transition diagram you pass it through a preprocessor and then you, you have to you write your specification in terms of uh, formula f you supply this to the model checker model checker will tell you wh whether this formula is respected by this model or design all the time or not if it is not in that case it produces counter example i'll show you an example how this can verify one particular design so the advantage of mo model checker are as follows like in in theorem proving we need to prove a couple of theorems so and and then the proven theorem we can use as axioms and then then prove the the remaining theorems so in this case and that is as i mentioned earlier that theorem proving is a semi automatic process hence here you you need to have manual intervention and industry generally doesn't like that and again here the theorem provers have scalability problem. So, here you do not need any proof. This is faster as compared to the other methodologies. It has diagnostic capability based on the counter example. So, counter example can tell you what could have gone wrong that is why your, your both of the designs sorry your design is not respecting the specification. And so, other very important thing here is that you need not to worry about full specification even if you have partial specification you can check for that is the those specification and you can say that these partial specifications or properties can or, or pro properties are always respected by the design so it is not necessary that you need to supply all these specifications one of the example i can can tell you that uh, for a traffic light controller you need not to define 
all the, the properties or all the specifications, maybe you are mostly interested in checking a property something like that. If it should not give green signal to cross roads that is most important that is defined as safety property. So, other things may, may, may still be ok, but that is never admissible. So, now if you say that please check for this property in that case here it will check for that property and, and tell you that whether that property is violated at any point in time or not. And so, so now here for partial specifications are ok. Many times we do not have access to the, the complete specifications as specifications are evolving. So, now, now here as I said that, that here you say uh, this is my state space and then here these are the, the, the state points. So, I start from some initial state and then here if I hit some illegal state in that case here I, I, I will I, I can identify that, that here the property is not respected. So, now, now here in this case if you start from here if you hit to, to some stop state or bad state in that case here it should stop and then you can traverse back and, and come back to the in initial state and, and that the, that back traversal will, will tell you the, the counter example and that tells you that if you pass through this particular route or, or, or states uh, you, you will encounter a bad state and, and hence your design is not respecting this property. This thing the hardware verification was first exercised by Misra and Clark from CMU in 85 and so this was the first model checker exercise for hardware verification. Though here the, the model checker was developed before that in 1981, but then here it model checker was explored for the, the software verification not for the, the hardware verification. And what uh, Misra found out was that uh, they, they were verifying the FIFO implementation from Mead and Conway book. They, I, I guess all of you must have gone through this, this book. This was this is one of the, the standard texts in VLSI design. So, now uh, and now they, they find find out a bug that, that was the first bug in, in, in standard FIFO implementation was was explored. So, this was the, the, the first instance of hardware verification using model checker. So, now here how model checker process um, uh, flow goes and what are the various steps how we can do that. So, as I mentioned that we need to supply two informations to model checker one is your design like here for example, your design may be a tra traffic light controller. So, now, now your design can be supplied as a finite state machine of tra traffic light controller. Then you have to specify some interesting properties that you would like to verify and those property could be like here you can say, say that it is never possible to have a green light for both north, south and east west uh, roads. It is safety violation because otherwise there could be an accident. So, you, you have to, to, to avoid that. So, now, now here it will either say that your, your property is always respected or, or it is true or if property fails in that case here it gives you the counter example that under this condition this property violates. So, in general in a, our hardware design we have this kind of com, a sequential circuit wherein you have couple of flip flops and input output that I can from this design I can extract finite state machine. So, this is finite state machine and that is referred as finite state model for the, the given design. So, this process is extraction of finite state machine or model from the design itself. So, finite state machine all, all of you, you know that finite state machine can be uh, may be a Moore, Moore's machine or Milli machine and that can be, be represented by a six tuple that is i is input state number of state uh, or, or set of states, state transition function, initial states, outputs and then the, the, the output function. So, the, the, this can be, be defined formally like this. Now, the, the, this uh, as I mentioned earlier your uh, model checker process is three step process. In that 
you need to formally specify or I can say mathematically specify the behavior or, uh, or the specification of the system. So, this is the, the precise statement and properties and generally we, we because here sequential circuits are, are temporal in nature in that case here we have to specify this in temporal logic and the behavior of desi design or implementation is referred uh, uh, as models and that is defined as flexible model for a given design, given a specified design. And uh, so, so if it is model in that case here it will have a transition system. So, transition sy system will have quintuple. So, a state transition and label. So, now, 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 now here state is, is, is set of states, this is transition function and these are the, 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 the labels. So, labels are the, the, the variables which holds good in that or, or which are true in that particular state. So, this way you, you define the model, here you define model in terms of finite state machine, here you, you define formal specification in temporal logic that can be computational tree logic or that can be uh, linear temporal logic. So, and then here you have to, to, to submit this to the formal verification, for formal verification tool, tool will check whether mo uh, your model satisfies the property all the time or not. So, now if you have say finite state machine, say this is your finite state machine and in this finite state machine I just two little bit changes in that. Finite state machine if, if you look at then machine is, is something like this. This may, may, may be the, the machine and now here when it it may if it is in, in a state this say S 0, S 1, S 2 this can go from this state to this state or this can go from S 1 to S 2 on arrival of some input. Now, here when it, it goes from this state to this state may be some variables may be may become valid or, or high. So, say here whatever variables which are true in that particular state we label in that state and this kind of conversion. So, see in this what we are interested in, we are interested in that all the means whether all the states are respecting the properties specified in the, the specification and in, or in terms of temporal logic. So, now we are interested that whether these properties are respected in all these states. So, now we are not interested what output it is producing or what input it is it is getting to go from state S 0 to S 1. We know that this can go from state S 1 to S 0. So, now, now here we want to eliminate I O from the, the edges just here we want to, to move this input output information from edges to the to the states and this conversion is known as conversion to creep case structure. So, now here say in this if say variable p and q are, are true, variable q and r are true here and variable r is true in the, this. So, now, now here we, we have to argue or uh, reason about this design based on these true variables. So, now here how the computation behavior progresses. So, if say this is the, the, the initial state wherein p and q are true, in that case here it always it will start from this state. Now, here based on the, the, the value of input either it can go to a state wherein the q and r are true or it can go to a state where r is true. So, now, now it can go, go here or here. In the next time from this q r state it, it can either go to, to p q state or it can go to a state where r is true. So, that means here it can go to p q or r and from r it can, can stay with, with, with r only. So, now, now here this way the, the, the computation progresses, computation of this state machine and this. So, now here it is constructing a tree and that is known as uh, computation tree. So, now here we have to specify the specification based on this computation tree which is specified here. So, now, now, now here that logic is known as computation tree logic. Now, here the, the, uh, the behavior uh, or timing behavior here, uh, here would be either you can believe that 
time in every cycle it is going from this state to this state to this state to this state and then this year keep on going or so now here the, if i look at one path in the, the this computation tree in that case here in every clock tick it advances to the next state to the next state to the next state so in that case here the behavior is linear or if I, I look at the, the sum in the computation tree in that case, if I look at some state in that case here, it can branch out to either this way or, or this way. When it goes here in that case again, it can branch out this way or this way. So, that means your behavior depends on the on the, the branching node. So, that is no, no, known as, as say a computation tree uh, logic or, or branching tree logic. Now, the, the, the qu question is, so this way we can, can construct a uh, computation tree. Now, the question is what kind of means how we can specify property or what kind of property we need to specify. So, there, there, there are couple of types of the properties we can specify say one is the safety property and safety property says that desirable things should always happen and undesirable things should never happen. So, that means like here for example, if I have a bus arbiter in that case here bus arbiter should never grant request to two masters otherwise both will will start to use the common shared resource that is illegal or if i send a message from sender in that case here the same message must be received at at, at receiver so message received must be sent by somebody these are the, the safety property there are other properties like here liveness property that tells you about the progress of the system so what it says is that desirable state should eventually be reached. So, that means like here if I want if I desire to get, get to some state in that case here at some point in time that state must be reached. So, uh, for example, a bus arbitrator request is eventually granted a car which arrives at a traffic light that should eventually be allowed to pass through. So, these are the, the, the kind of, of liveness properties we use there are, are say fairness properties. What fairness property says that desirable is state should repeatedly reached. So, that means here if I desire some state in that case here at some point in time that should be reached and then here again and again there should be at least one of the paths that can take you to that, that state again and again. So, a request states and, and grant state for each client must be visited infinite simile often. So, like here for example, in this, this traffic light controller I am, I, I am sensing the, the these vehicles by some of the detectors and now, now here what we can do is we have to make sure that here uh, there, there should not be any collision and when there can be a collision if you, you, you provide green signal to both of the cross roads in that case here there may be a collision and the so and we have to guarantee uh, the, the service eventually. So, that means here if say some car arrives here it should be eventually be passed from this one. Okay. So, now, now here some of these properties we can, can specify like this, the some properties may be very static in na nature. La la let us say this is a uh, finite state machine for traffic light controller wherein I have these three states red, green, yellow and then here if there is an error in that case here it may go to the, the erroneous state. This can be, be means it is shown here. So, now here if I, I say there are 4 states and, and if I represent 2 bits per, per state in that case here I can say statically that in any of the state these means these 2 bits which are representing these states should never be same. So, that, so, that, that means that can make sure that here at the same time I cannot have green and, and uh, red sorry green and green signals. This is the repetition of the same, same slide that here you can represent a specification using a formula f and that is in terms of temporal logic or and you can represent your design using state machine. So, in this your m is, is the, the, the transition system I, as I said the transition system will have a set of states transition function 
and label of each on uh, each and every state and and so now, now here m is defined as computation tree so so it is a tree and f specify the, the the formula this verification checks whether these conditions holds for all the tree defined by this machine m so it computes the the, the set of states of m satisfying formula f and m satisfies f if and only if initial state of m are in the same state. So, now in order to formally spe specify as a as a language here a temporal logic that, that uses the, the, the linear semantics uh, is defined as linear time temporal logic L T L and L T L is, is formally defined using Bacchus nor form that is being used in computer science. So, a phi is, is a formula that phi can be, be given as universal truth that can be that is tautology, then it can be, be given as negation of the universal truth that is inverse of tautology and then this can be, be a formula p, this can be negation of formula negation of, of phi, this can be, be, be a formula intersection uh, formula conjunction with another formula, formula disjunction with another formula, this formula implies another formula and then there is some temporal operators, those are, are x. So, this uh, operator dis conjunction, disjunction and, and implications are the, the, the static formula and then there are temporal formula that is x, f, z until week until and r. So, now here I will explain you in detail wa what are the, the these formulas. So, now here we, we specify a system as a transition system as is the set of states the, this is transition function and then here l are the, the label. So, this is a set of states as endowed with a transition uh, relation uh, and in such a way that every state as has some state as this. This has uh, has a this function is specified as a transition system m that is as uh, transition function and l and so and this is specified as, as a uh, set of state as and endowed with a transition relationship on uh, such that every uh, state small s a set of member of uh, s has some uh, state s days which belongs al also to the set s wherein you have transition from s to s days and uh, that is labeled by by label s in that here we de define a path that, that that is in a model m which is a infinite sequence of states s1 s2 s3 s n and this path is represented as, as a pi and, and pi is starting from a path s 1 is defined as s 1 to s 2 s 3 s s 4 and, and, and s n. So, these uh, the, the, this formula I, as we discussed earlier, this formula those are called as L T L formula those are, are defined here that this pi is can be a temporal formula T that can be, be, be a temporal formula of inverse of tautology that can be a formula that, that, that is valid LTL formula, this can be negation, this can be conjunction, disjunction and implication. So, then uh, there, there are temporal operators x, g, f until v until. So, now, now in this if we, we, we define the, the, this formula say this phi phi 1 uh, means phi 1 is, is one formula and, and phi 2 is, is, is another another formula. So, now, now, now here phi 1 and, and say phi 2. So, this formula holds good if phi 1 holds good and phi 2 holds good. So, phi 1 and uh, disjunction with phi 2 holds good if phi 1 holds good or phi 2 holds good and this the implication holds good if phi 1 satisfies. So, that means, here phi 2 holds good if and only only if phi 1 holds good. Temporal 
so now here say in 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 a transition computation tree if i go from a state s1 to a state s2 to a state s3 from s1 i can go to to say state s3 to 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 state again s1 and so on and so forth so now if some formula holds good in exactly in the next state then i i define that as x of phi this is next of phi that means here like here for example if i get a request for a common resource and i acknowledge that in, in very next state in that case here acknowledgement holds good in very next state hence here i can can specify that x of acknowledgement so that means here acknowledgement holds good in in very next state sometimes so, so if some master raises a request and that request may be entertained after a while or granted after a while. So, in that case you have to wait until it, it, is, it is granted. So, that means here we are not very sure whether it would be granted in the next cycle or next to next cycle or next to next cycle. So, in that case here those properties can be specified as using a future operator. So, that means here the formula will hold good sometimes in the future, not necessarily exactly in the next state or next to next state or next to next to next state, but somewhere in the future. Then we have operator as until operator. Until operator says that say phi formula holds good until psi holds good. So, what it says that if this is the, the, the state transition in that ca case here my formula phi should remain hold good until I reach to a formula psi. So, the psi sh should hold good. So, that means here in this always here the, 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 there must be some means at that at least in one of the states psi should hold good. This is little bit strong and there is a weaker version of that that is weak version phi weak until psi. What it says is that phi should hold good until psi uh, arrives. So, that means here this phi should hold good, phi should hold good. So, that the uh, and until uh, so that means here like for example, one of the, the example could be your acknowledge uh, sorry the request should remain active until you get uh, until it is granted. So, that, that means here at least at some point in time you will have grant that is that we can represent uh, using the, the until. So, that means here request hold good until it is granted I can write that, but in some of the cases we need weaker version. So, that means here like either this phi should hold good until psi uh, arrives or phi continue to hold good phi 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 infinite. So, that means here phi psi never ap, uh, arrives in that case also this formula holds good this is weak, weaker version of of until and then there is another formula that is no, known as phi religious psi. So, phi religious psi this says that, that, that here when phi arrives in that case here psi would be released. So, that means here you have psi 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 and there would be at least one state in, in which here the, 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 the this phi releases psi. So, that this is the, the, the difference between psi and uh, the release and, and until operator that here at least there should be one state in, in, in which both of the formula should hold good after that we cannot argue about that. So, now, now here if you look at the, the, the progression of this, this give, show you that in computation path your x operator will say that here x of f means here in the very next state f should hold good and in this state f should, should not hold good. f until g that means here f should keep on hold uh, keep hold true until g arrives. f of g will tell you that at some time in the future g will, will hold good. g is another operator that, that is global operator that, that means it says that in every state in this path your app should hold good and release operator will say you, you that, that, that here g releases uh, f. So, with this uh, with the definition of the 
syntax of LTL formula. I complete my lecture here and I will continue with this in the ne next class, wherein we will uh, see how we, uh, we can specify a transition system using this formula and then here how we can verify that using model, model checker. Thank you very much. Good day.